We should note that during our conversation, Kennedy made false claims about the COVID-19 vaccines. Data shows that the COVID-19 vaccines prevented millions of hospitalizations and deaths from the disease. He also made misleading claims about the relationship between vaccination and autism. Research shows that vaccines and the ingredients used for the vaccines do not cause autism, including multiple studies involving more than a million children and major medical associations like the American Academy of Pediatrics and the advocacy group Autism Speaks. We've used our editorial judgment in not including extended portions of that exchange in our interview. So tell us, why did you decide to run for president? I felt like my country was being taken away from me. I felt like um, I wanted my children to grow up with the same pride in our country and the same love for our country and the same idea that we had this, you know, this idealism, these opportunities in our country and that we had, you know, communities that were filled with dignity and enrichment and that we were an exemplary nation. And my party also was becoming the party of war, the party of censorship, the party of fear and um, the party of, you know, the neocons and, and Wall Street. And I just felt like I was in a unique opportunity to change that. And how so? Uh, you've never held a political position before. Obviously, you've been in uh, environmental law for more than three decades. But what do you feel qualifies you for the highest position in the land? Uh, I think I know more about how to fix regulatory agencies than any other politician in this country because I've spent 40 years suing them. You've been very critical on multiple government agencies from the CIA, the EPA, the DOT, the CDC, the FDA. If you were to become president, you would effectively be the boss of all of these agencies that you've cast so many aspersions on and said publicly that there's so much distrust there. How would you run them if you... Yeah, and let me say this, Lindsay. I don't think... I think most of the people, 90% of the people in those agencies are good Americans. They're good public servants. They're patriots. They are idealistic, and they want to do their job. The problem is the people who rise to power in those agencies usually are the people who are in the tank with industry who are willing to carry water for the industry. The DNC has said, as you're well aware, that they are going to support Biden. They're not going to even hold any primary debates. Do you plan on pushing back on that? Well, I think it's troubling that if we don't have debates. I mean, particularly, Lindsay, at this point in history, um, there's so many Americans who believe that our democracy is broken, that the system is rigged against them. And I think it's really you know, incumbent on the Democratic Party to to act as a template to make this election a template for democracy and saying, you know, we're going to have debates, we're going to have open discussion, we're going to let the people decide, we're not going to have party leaders decide who are going to be our primary like they did in the Soviet Union. There are known conspiracy theorists like Alex Jones, Steve Bannon, you go on their talk shows and at the same time tell mm -hmm. America that media is lying to you. Well, How do you square I, that with I, voters? I, first of all, those are two different issues. The, the one issue is, should I be talking to Republican platforms? That's a completely different issue. I don't know. I, when I go on those platforms, I'm not lying to people. I'm telling the but truth. But you legitimize I, the platforms. I'm not, it doesn't matter. I, to me, there's no way that you can overcome the polarization without talking to people on the other side. You've said in the past that there is a, a correlation between uh, vaccines leading to autism that's totally been debunked. Wait a minute, who debunked it? We oh. have not seen any kind of scientific connection from the CDC, the World Health Organization, but, the but National those Academy of Sciences. organizations are captive agencies, Lindsay. And so you think they're all in cahoots? Yeah, they're all captive. If you don't regard the same scientific authorities. Science is rarely static. There are very few scientific principles that are immovable. Science is dynamic. And, you know, look, I, I, you, I've had, I've argued over probably, or I've, I've litigated over 500 lawsuits. In every one of those lawsuits, there are experts, authorities on one side and experts and authorities on the other that are saying the exact opposite thing. So no, I don't trust authority. I need to see the details. I need to see the signs. Your final pitch to voters. My pitch would be that you know, we need, we, we need to look at what's happened to our country. We need to try to, um, to, to arrest this emergence of corporatism, of the corrupt 
merger of state and corporate power that's undermining our values, that's strip mining our landscapes, uh, that is stealing the assets of the middle class of this country, that is compromising the values of this country, that's keeping us in a constant state of war, and that uh, is creating a, a nation that doesn't resemble the nation that you know we all love, which is a nation with a few handful of billionaires and widespread poverty, in which democracy does not have a prayer of continuing. And let's try to uh, let's try to take a new path that will allow us to give our children a country that is once again a moral authority around the globe, an exemplary nation, and that has a booming middle class in this country that can sustain democracy.